Carbohydrates. It is the primary source of calories and energy and the most abundant organic molecule in nature and it's known as the saccharides. In chemistry, saccharides refer to an organic compound which simply means sugar and it is soluble in water and sweet in taste as sugars. Carbohydrates is an empirical formula of CH2O and it means hydrated carbon. Well, hydrated carbons will literally mean that a carbon is provided with liquid or water. And because the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is nearly 2 is to 1. And when water is drained, nothing is left but carbon. Well, the following are sources of carbohydrates. From the plant source, we have a variety of vegetables. And as well, a variety of fruits, the wheat and the grains, and from animal source, we have the milk and the cheese. Carbohydrates come in two main forms, the simple and the complex carbohydrates. It is being classified according to the size and solubility. Carbohydrates is part of the made up of carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. Simple sugar includes the monosaccharides and the disaccharides, which are characterized by a single straight or a single ring chain of a molecule. Let us take a look and a listen at a carbohydrates ball and stick model of a glucose ring of chain. This is a clip of a ball and stick model, a glucose ring chain of a molecule that is well depicted by a simple carbohydrates formed from a ring chain of a molecule of a carbon in the middle. As you may notice, a ring chain is being formed by a carbon that is represented by a block balls which are six in numbers representing the C6 in the empirical formula. And these are further attached to oxygen molecules which are represented by a red balls which are six in numbers and that O6 as it is in the ring chain of empirical formula. Further, the oxygen is attached into a hydrogen which forms a hydroxyl group from which it is represented by blue balls which are 12 in number. Together, all of these forms, the glucose ring chain of the molecules, C6, this is our carbon 6, hydrogen 12, represented by the blue balls, and O6, which is represented by the oxygen. This is a ball and stick model of a complex carbohydrates representing polysaccharides or starches. A long carbon backbone chain is being formed in the middle with a ring chain at the end and a few oxygen at the other end. This represents the complex carbohydrates. Let us distinguish between what is a monomer and a polymer. In order to create a macromolecule or a compound or a substance, a monomer is a building block. And a monomer is a type of a molecule 
that has the ability to chemically bond with other molecules in a long chain. In this illustration, we will create a macromolecule by combining the monomer of a saccharides, one at the left upper, two at the left lower, one at the right upper, and another one at the right lower. Let us now put them in place. The first monomer has been put in place, and this is added with another monomer. The third monomer will be added again, and the fourth monomer will be added. And in this case, they have been added by the linkages, such as the covalent bond between them. And the polymer has just been created, a complex macromolecules that is composed of many repeating subunits, a chain of an unspecified number of a monomer. And in this case, we just have created a macromolecules from a polymer of oligosaccharides. The dehydration synthesis. This is a reaction between two monomers. And the two monomers will have one with a hydrogen and the other monomer will have a hydroxyl group that will be removed. And the hydration synthesis will have the joining of a two monomers and the water will be released in the end. Let's take a look and listen on how it will happen. Normally, a monomer do have a hydroxyl group on each side, at the left and at the right. And when two monomers are being combined together, there will be a reaction between the both hydroxyl group in the middle, from which this is highlighted as one at the left, will have the hydrogen and one at the right will have the hydroxyl group to be released or to be removed. Thereafter, the reaction, a product will result. And the result of the product is or are two monomers that are being joined by a covalent bond and having oxygen in the middle. Now, the highlighted hydrogen and hydroxyl group at the left, highlighted with blue, will now be formed as a water, a water that will soon be removed. And again, the key word for dehydration synthesis is the word synthesis, meaning there will be two monomers that will be combined. Two monomers will be joined and combined by a covalent bond. And having said this, as they are combined, something will be lost. The hydroxyl group and the hydrogen of both two monomers, and that will form a water, and the water is being released. Okay. Let's take a look at hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the exact opposite of uh, dehydration synthesis. Now, this is a chemical process wherein a molecule of water is added to the substance. Now, there are two monomers that will split into two. They are going to be released and the covalent bond will be disbanded on the two monomers. One will gain a hydrogen ion now, let's take a look and listen on how hydrolysis will happen. As two monomers are being bonded together by a covalent bond, the purpose of hydrolysis will be to decompose, disintegrate, and break the bond between two monomers. And this is going to be done by the release of water or the consumption 
or using up of water. Thereafter, once the two monomers has been added with water, there will be a resulting product on the right side of the equation. And as you may look at the left side, from which the HOH or the water is highlighted, it will now be transformed into the right equation as to hydrogen on the left monomer and hydroxyl at the right. Meaning, the water from the left equation is being used up at the right side. And then, it will result now to a normal monomer meaning the monomers are being released. The two combined monomer from the beginning are now being separated or disintegrated. This is a visual chart or a concept map of a saccharides or carbohydrates with their respective classifications or subclassifications. And that is according to the number of monomers that they possess. Generally, carbohydrate is classified as monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. Let us take a closer look. Saccharides classifications are monomers of carbohydrates or its building blocks. And the classifications are described and is composed of a combined prefix and a suffix, having a fixed suffix as a saccharides. Monosaccharides, mono meaning one sugar molecule, and it comes from a single chain of either a ring or a straight chain with three to seven carbon atoms. Disaccharides, meaning two sugar molecules that are combined together by a glycosidic linkages by a dehydration reaction. The oligosaccharides, it is composed of a 3 to 10 combined sugar molecules held by a glycosidic linkage. And the polysaccharides, meaning many sugar molecules, this is a long branching chain of a link of a simple sugar resulting to a complex one and it acts as an ideal storage for carbohydrates. Let us focus on monosaccharides, a single sugar molecule. Monosaccharide is made up of five components, namely the glucose, the fructose, the galactose, the ribose, and the deoxyribose. Common among all monosaccharides is that their chemical composition is made up of carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. And that, they, be, they are being represented by the empirical formula C6, H12, and O6. Let's take a look at the glucose. Glucose are said to be simple sugar, Greek word for sweet. It is also known as the dextrose, grape sugar, corn sugar, and the most, it is a blood sugar, driven by insulin into the cell. It is also a universal cellular fluid, the energy source for cellular respiration and ATP production. The glucose is the most abundant, water-soluble. However, the excess of glucose can cause a damage to the kidneys, to the eyes, and other organs. By looking at the chemical formula and the ball and stick model of a glucose. It emphasizes that it is a straight chain forming a six carbon atoms in the middle. If you may look at the straight chain at the right side, this is a vertical chain having six carbons as the middle chain. And these are further attached to the six oxygen molecules and hydrogen molecules at the side. Let's take a look at the fructose. Fructose is known as the fruit sugar and this is absorbed directly into the blood. It has an empirical formula as well of C6H12 
O6. And the natural sources of fructose are plants and fruits, vegetable, honey, and sugar cane. Now, let's take a look at the galactose. Galactose are found in dairy product, cheese, milk, avocados, sugar beets, gums, and mucilage. Common among all the monosaccharides is that they are formed from a long chain of carbon with their chemical composition which makes them different from one another would be the position and arrangement of their atoms and the functional groups they are attached to. And finally, let's take at the ribose. The ribose is being synthesized by the body and it is somehow appearing in the form of medicine, particularly an IV to improve the heart function in case of coronary disease. The ribose has a structural analog of the oxyribose and ribose is a component of RNA and essential for coding, decoding, and expression of the genes. The chemical formula for ribose is C5H10O5. And finally, let's take at the deoxyribose. Deoxyribose is found in the DNA. It has a modified lacking one sugar and hence deoxyribose. It forms part of the nucleic acid. And deoxyribose has a formula of C5H10O4.